OMG, my kids are asleep. <laughs> so I have a minute to to study and do some review. So the other day I went back to the dollar store that I usually like. Um, they have only two of these glitter gel pen left. Um, so I grabbed them both and it, it's exactly the same colors. Um, I wish they have the other set that have like um, brown and um, pink like hot pink because this one it has like red instead of pink but anyways I still grabbed the last two they have and I'm going to do a review on it um, however I just want to tell you a quick things that um, how I study um, so when I go to class a professor always um, posted notes like this these are these are microbiology anyways um, I want to go to school for nursing so there's a um, prerequisite of some science classes that you might need to take and one of them is microbiology so just say um, professor posted these um, a day or two before class and I just print it out and then I write note as um, she goes lecture about it and I'll just write as fast as I could as many information as I could I do use the app on my iPhone to record the notes it's like a podcast app or something a voice app and then um, I come back home I read my notes and I look at it it was like wow so old I mean for example when I look at these it's like all over the place so I was like okay invasion of pathogen it said included in the host defense establishment of infection what is it is it exoenzymes is it it's it's really all over the place because if you just look at my notes and I wrote it and I'm like what am I writing what's belong to what what are the exoenzymes what are the 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 antigen variation it's like I don't know who's belong to what group so then I look through my notes and I'm trying to see like okay so D section it's a C evasion of host defense so I you know I label A B C so anything to me I have to break down in a mathematical in order for me to group things and when I group things I can study in a bunch of things all together so I don't have to memorize each particular things because once I group things it it's just click into my brain a lot better and I don't have to spend so so much time studying and I do read the book just the section that I was lecture on I don't waste time to read a lot more out of the book because the book is so much information so if I don't understand something I read the section of it inside the textbook or sometimes I just have time I feel like oh I want to you know learn a little bit more about this section then I I read a book and sometimes some other section also interests me so I read a little bit you know page or two just because um, however I label ABC and then in C they have five category in it so to evasion of host defense and one of them is hiding within host cell phagocytosis avoid antibody exoenzyme and then antigen variation so all these belong to this category and then as she goes she broke it down so the hiding within host cell body it just mechanical so they just go hide it I don't know she didn't let you on it so I just put a note right here, white blood cell phagocytosis, so they just avoid phagocytosis by white blood cell. And so I go on to C2, and then I label it, it belongs to C, so C2, C3, C4, and then under exoenzyme, they have a bunch of enzymes listed. So coagulate is an exoenzyme, kinase is an exoenzyme. And then there's a lot of things to exoenzyme, so I would put like continue like this because if I didn't label this, I wouldn't know who's belong to what. And it's just me, it might be just me. And then they also have different toxin. So like when you come to toxin, you break down again. I, I have the romance number. 
So I break down to study it differently. So after antigenic variation, it's done on this category. So no more evasion of host defense. So I'm gonna put like damage of host cell. So I'm thinking of changing this back to a D and an E instead of the Romans number as, you know, I didn't have Romans number, but yeah, I changed that. Or, and then I transfer it into my notes. So we'll just say, this is chapter 15, right? So chapter 15, I did that. I read some book and add some more stuff. Um, and I, I, oh yes, so I romance number here. And then I put alphabet there because I changed my mind as I transfer. It's like, okay, number is easier for me because A, B, C, D, I have to count. Oh, e is five. <laughs> so yes, and then I have that. And then I have the little note that belonged to Roman number three. And then in number two, they have extra stuff that under number two, evasion of phagocytosis, have three things that come within capsule and protein, mycolic acid. So it's just so much information. And if you don't categorize it, you might think that, oh, mycolic acid is an exoenzyme. No, 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 no. Mycolic acid is not an exoenzyme. Exoenzyme is these guys. You see? You see, that's how, that's why I, I label it. And then underneath of the, what is it? Hmm. Maybe in basin is exoenzyme too, and protein and leukocytin. So when I number these, I believe this is also belong to exoenzyme. So well, M protein is an exoenzyme. However, the capsule is not. So you see, like, it's sometimes it's very confusing, and numbering can help you keep track of those stuff. So M protein is the protein that make capsule, but capsule is not an enzyme. It's just a structure. So M protein is an exoenzyme protein that can make capsule. And capsule can avoid um, whole cell engulfment or something. So yeah, it's a lot to remember. And on these, I use um, this pen from Dollar Tree. So it's like a felt tip pen, but um, I use, I refill it. I use the calligraphy Indian ink refill in black, just simple. And you wouldn't believe how easy to take off this tip. You just use like um, a, a scissor, but at the end, and you just like pull it off. And then put a couple drop using like old syringe, you know, from your kid's medication or something. Just put a couple drop and let it sit. And then close the cap back and close it and let it kind of run down because um, it's, kind of stuck on the top and then you just make sure you clean it a few times because every time you open it back it's like a little dirty and then just reuse them yes so when I need to write fast the inky pen really make me write fast and it's really dark and then I have the blue one too so it comes in a pack of two like two blue or two blacks um, for a dollar it's not expensive but I can use this fast, so I need to refill them, especially the black, because you can see that I mostly write with black pen. I sometimes write with gel pen just because it has something and just make it more interesting. But when you you switch so many colors, it really slow you down. So yeah, so it's really depend. Anyhow, uh, let's go back to reviewing the glitter pen now. So. He's a little pen. I grabbed two just in case um, my mom won one. She always take my pen. And then she would just take like my favorite color, like pink or purple, and then <laughs> leave me the rest of the colors. Um, and I'm like, why can't you just take it all? It's weird. <laughs> so this pen is supposed to smell, and it does smell a little tiny bit. So this is 
purple. Go right. So this tip is like I don't know. I feel like 0.1 or at least 0.08 or 0.1 millimeter. It's just it right really thick. And it has a little glitter. I don't know if you can like really see it. So that is the purple. And the blue one is blueberry. for a little bit, scribble a little bit to keep the ink or to help the ink flow. Oh, the green one doesn't write that nice. It's like scratchy, the green one. But the color is really nice, like teal green. And smell a little bit like green apple. And then the red one is strawberry. So the last set that I got from this basic pen, um, I write I have pink and I use a lot of pink too so I wish this one has um, pink and red instead of yellow I don't really like yellow pen because I can't see yellow one is lemon I really can't my eye really sucks with detecting yellow pen and I can't open a yellow one right now this is um oh the orange ones is scratchy too so orange and green teal is a little scratchy maybe I got to like scribble it more oh, okay so if you scribble it more it works better and um uh, yellow Yellow. Oh, yellow is so gold. Gold. It's like it's really nice. Yellow. But then when I write in my note, I can't really see it. I mean, if you use this for coloring or something, yes, it's really cute. It's really nice. Smooth writing. So overall, these things worth a dollar. It does. And believe it or not, the, the, the refill of this fit the older the older sets that I got a while back. Um, so if I don't really like this body, and I use it up all the other one, I can just pop this in the other body. Cause like, oh, this is so straight and so round. I don't like this body. Yeah. But um, overall, I really like. The, the smoothness of it yet it's so cheap four dollar for six colors pen with some glitter and so I will try to go back and try to find out a color yep because I like the pink and brown I usually don't like brown pen but just lately I'm into brown pen it's really weird and and these are another storage that I have. I really like any storage that I can see through it so I know what's inside. And I used to have a, a few of these makeup bags. Um, I got free from buying the hair color, like a Ren's hair color, like so many years ago. And then I don't know what happened to the rest of it. I had like three. I hope I didn't throw away or my husband threw it away or my sister threw it away. I don't, I don't know. Um, but I really wish I had more because it's really really handy when you put pen and you can just see what you have and this big um, Mark a lot marker. It's like a felt tip marker. It's similar to Stadler, but it's a little bit bigger It's the same size as, as the Sharpie and I had these for 
I don't know, six years. And it's still right. So I'm so happy and one day I will do a review on it. But in the meantime, gel pen. Basic gel pen. Okay, have a good day. Thank you for watching.